Conclusion Issue 5, April 2014 The Accessible Information Solutions Newsletter With approximately one in every five Australians experiencing print disability, we offer information, advice and solutions to connect, empower and realise social inclusion. Welcome to issue number five of Inclusion. The articles in this issue are Taking Care of Business Print Accessibility 101 Audio Description at the Sydney Opera House 2014 Audio Description Schedule of Events Client Interview Meet the Team, Jane Wegener Tip of the Month and Connect with us online. To find out more, you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, via our website, email, Google Plus and LinkedIn. There are links in the email version of this newsletter or listen to the last part of this recording for the full web addresses. Taking care of business. There are a thousand small things we take for granted every day when networking in a sighted world. Reading brochures and advertising materials, seeing name tags or being handed a business card. These seemingly small things can add up for somebody who cannot read standard print with ease. Every year, Vision Australia works with organisations and government departments across Australia to produce accessible business cards, particularly those featuring Braille. Not only does this improve accessibility of the business card for people who are blind, but it also sends a strong message about an organisation's commitment to inclusion. Braille business cards are in particular demand for people who regularly deal with clients who are blind or have low vision, such as disability organisations, non-profits, healthcare providers, educational institutions, local councils and all other areas and levels of government. Most recently, we produced Braille business cards for the Honourable Bill Shorten MP. Vision Australia also encourages printers and graphic designers to use large print on business cards. Often this can be done using just the vital information, such as the person's name and the primary contact number, on the reverse side of the card, meaning that your branding and corporate style on the face of the card does not have to be affected. Similarly, applying Braille over the print does not affect the readability. While only a small percentage of the 3.6 million Australians who have a print disability are Braille readers, Braille is an instantly recognisable symbol of access and inclusion. Including Braille on your business card makes a clear statement to anyone you hand it to, and it's those first impressions that count. For further information, or to download an order form, visit www.visionaustralia.org slash business dash and dash professionals slash print dash accessibility dash services slash braille dash business dash cards. You can also check out the video on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash watch question mark V equals R capital Q I S F 8 B H dash capital X capital M. Or search Vision Australia Print Access on YouTube to locate our YouTube channel. Print Accessibility 101 Inclusion is a newsletter that focuses on print accessibility. Each month we talk about a variety of related topics, tips and events, but every now and again it's good to do a 101 refresher to understand what is print accessibility. Print accessibility is the ability for someone with a print disability to independently read, navigate and understand content. Any person who has difficulty accessing and using standard print information experiences a print disability. According to research undertaken by Radio for the Print Handicapped in 2007, there are 3.6 million Australians who are affected by a print disability. This can include someone who cannot effectively read print because of a visual, physical, perceptual, developmental, cognitive or learning disability. While people with a print disability definitely benefit from making information print accessible, everybody wants a document that is easy to read and understand. 
so many of the benefits apply to everyone. Like the spoken word, as a society, we rely hugely on the printed word as a communication device, no matter what channel we use it online, print magazines, newspapers and books, work information, or even personal messages. So, how does someone who has a print disability access the printed word? Well, this is where print accessibility and having correctly structured content comes in. A variety of methods can be used to access print content by someone with a print disability, including the use of adaptive technology, such as magnifiers or screen readers, which verbally narrate the text using synthetic voice technology. Other methods include producing alternative formats, which are alternatives to the standard print text. Alternative formats include audio, DAISY, Digital Accessible Information System, Braille, e-text, and large print. It is important that content be structured correctly so that someone with a screen reader can move around the document easily. This means having headings and sections marked up in electronic text to the required navigation enabling standard. Layout of documents is also important so that they are as legible as possible. The creation of alternative formats will also benefit from having a correctly structured document. We have only touched on the world of print accessibility here, so if you would like to find out more, have a chat to Charlotte Gorham on 03 9864-9552 or email any questions to charlotte.gorham that's C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E dot G-O-R-H-A-M at visionaustralia.org Audio Description at Sydney Opera House Audio description is a technique for verbally describing visual action that can take place on television, films and live performances. During gaps in dialogue, an audio describer outlines visual elements such as movement, settings, action scenes and costumes. Audio description is particularly beneficial to people who are blind or are vision impaired and people with print, learning, and physical disabilities. Accessible Information Solutions at Vision Australia provides an audio description service through which live theatre events and shows are described by trained and experienced audio describers. Now in an exciting development, staff at Sydney Opera House are also learning how to provide audio description. In a partnership between Sydney Opera House and Vision Australia, Accessible Information Solutions are training Sydney Opera House staff in the techniques of audio description to assist in their in-house education programs, tours and special events. Midweek shows are offered as part of their education programs to children in schools. This includes school children who are blind or have low vision. An extensive training program has been put in place, including an audition process to recruit the best internal talent. A structured mentoring program will also make sure new skills are correctly applied. After the training course has been completed, an assessment will take place with a panel consisting of audio description experts as well as users of the service. This will ensure the service meets the required standard and has the user firmly as its focus. It's great that Sydney Opera House are expanding the accessibility of their shows and in turn the ability for a diverse Australian community to access and enjoy a rich showcase of culture. 2014 Audio Description Schedule of Events The 2014 Audio Description Schedule of Events is the annual calendar of live events such as theatre and opera that are audio described. Vision Australia produces this schedule every year to identify which events and performances are enriched with audio description. If you know someone who is blind or visually impaired who would like a copy of the schedule, please contact Michael Ward at michael.ward 
That's M I C H A E L dot W A R D at visionaustralia.org. The schedule is available in DAISY Compact Disc and eText, which can also be accessed from Vision Australia's website at www.visionaustralia.org and then search for 2014 Audio Description National Schedule. I'm joined in the studio today by Bernadette Jolly, or Bernie as she's affectionately known by us. Bernie actually works at Vision Australia and she's also a client here. Hi Bernie. Hi there. Thanks for taking the time to chat to us. You're welcome. Now, we were chatting earlier about issues around accessing information. And as someone who is blind, can you tell us a little more about how you access information and the kind of formats that you use? Okay, Charlotte. Well, I'm totally blind and um, I'm lucky enough to be a Braille reader. So um, Braille is um, one of the mediums that I use. I use audio to get information, for example, um, stuff that's recorded on CDs. I use radio. I use TV. I use the internet. I think you could say I'll use anything uh, that I can avail myself from if I'm after information. Fantastic. And is there any formats that you particularly use that are of value to you? Um, Yeah, it's difficult to say which one would be of most value because they all have their place. For example, if I'm using a recipe book or a knitting pattern, Braille is the best thing then. And for football fixtures and cricket fixtures, Braille is the best. Yeah. Um, for reading books, I often use audio because it's portable. I can have it on a, a small player and just take it with me, or I can read a book off my iPhone. So it really depends on what the situation is and what, what I'm wanting the material for. And what about the information you have problems accessing and how does that impact you? Um, some of the times when I've had um, issues is with, um, restaurant menus, particularly takeaway menus, because they get delivered into the letterbox and I can't read them. And I'd often like to avail myself of a takeaway meal. However, sometimes now those places will put their menus onto the internet so that for those of us that can use that, that's really good. Um, I find it annoying when there's uh, newsletters that come into the mailbox from local government, from your local member, just letting you know what they've been doing. Well, you know, it's no good to me like that. I can't read it. And they're not really, I I haven't come across them on the internet either. But then, of course, many people don't use the internet. So those sort of newsletters and things really need to be made available to everybody, probably in audio as well as in other ways. Mm, Sure. Um, I've found too that sometimes it's been difficult to get information about particular drugs that we might use, like um, prescribed drugs. Yes. So those, those kind of things are quite important. There's a whole raft of us out there that for various reasons are, have a print disability and we can't access information that is very important and that all of our colleagues and so forth are accessing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, from what I'm hearing you saying as well is that, you know, we do have, uh, we live in an age where a, lot's being, a lot is being driven online and that it's really important that um, those who don't have access to that can still get access to the information in ways that they can. Yeah, well, I, th- I think that's really true, Charlotte, because there's a lot of people out there that have vision impairment in the older age group that haven't grasped the internet at this stage. In years to come, it, it won't be an issue because those of us that are um, haven't quite reached that <laughs> age yet, <laughs> um, by the time we are older, you know, we'll be proficient with the internet. But at the moment, there's still a, a change over time for people. So there are a lot of older people out there that are missing out on, on vital information. Um, I think the home services of the councils, local councils, the age services in the councils perhaps could be doing a bit more to put their material into audio formats mm, sure, for people. Sure, sure. Yeah. And Bernie, any advice for people who are having problems accessing standard printed information? Well, Vision Australia does have a service where they can put material into alternate formats for you. So a, an individual could ask for that to be done, can request it. Um, and also, that's a service I've used many times over the years so that I can keep up with information. Um, and, and to have my recipe books, and which are really vital stuff. You know, mm. I, I think that that's been a 
invaluable service to me. And also for people who produce materials in print, you also can contact Vision Australia and talk to them about how you could have that material more accessible to blind and vision impaired people. Mm, absolutely. And and I also wonder whether the um, individual can approach organisations to ask for that information as well. I, I think it's important that we ourselves, as blind and vision impaired people, do ask organisations, can the material be available to us in any other way? That's how we originally got our telephone bills in Braille, Yeah, because people asked for it. So you have to do a lot of self-advocacy when you're blind and vision impaired. That, well, that's what I found over the years. Mm. Hopefully in, at some stage it'll just be all a natural thing and we won't have to worry. But people are coming on board. Um, I notice now that I can get a lot more of my bills from the utilities like water, electricity, gas online. And that really makes life so much easier. So people have to start thinking out of the square and be more inclusive with their materials. Absolutely. Well, Bernie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. Thank you. Meet the team, Jane Wegener. Hi, I'm Jane Wegener. I'm the Operations Coordinator for the Accessible Information Solutions production team based in Enfield, New South Wales. My role is to oversee the production of alternate format material such as braille and large print, for people who are blind or have low vision. Our team produces many types of print material for our clients, ensuring that they have timely access to important information such as their utility bills, council information, bank statements, educational material, recipe books, restaurant menus and even the footy calendar. In my job, I often get to chat with our clients and I love to hear about how their lives have been improved because they can access the print material that they need. Our clients do some amazing things, and I am proud to be part of a team that has helped them achieve their goals, such as graduating from university, passing an exam, reading a book to their grandchild, learning the piano, or knitting a jumper. I also enjoy working with a team of talented and dedicated transcribers and customer service staff who also love what they do. When I'm not working, I'm a taxi driver for two busy kids, enjoy a game of tennis and spending my weekends in my garden. Tip of the month. Many organisations don't know where to begin when it comes to accessible formats. Few have the resources to produce multiple formats in-house. Most aren't even sure what accessible or alternate formats are or why they're needed. For some straightforward information on accessible formats and the production services that Vision Australia can provide, request a copy of our Accessible Information Solutions General Information PDF. Contact Charlotte Gorham on 03 9864 9552 or email charlotte.gorham at visionaustralia.org. That's charlotte.gorham at visionaustralia.org. And for general information and the latest news, connect with us online. For Facebook, go to facebook.com forward slash Vision Australia Print Access. Twitter, go to twitter.com forward slash VA Print Access. Our website, go to www.visionaustralia.org forward slash business dash and dash professionals forward slash print Dash accessibility dash services. Email print access at visionaustralia.org. Google Plus, go to plus.google.com and search for VA print access. And LinkedIn, go to linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash 388547. Thanks for listening to edition 5 of Inclusion. Inclusion is copyright 2014 to Vision Australia, all rights reserved. You can update your subscription preferences or unsubscribe from this list by emailing printaccess at visionaustralia.org. This edition was recorded in March 2014 by Accessible Information Solutions of Vision Australia. Your narrators were... Deborah Pierce Carl Hughes Angus Spence Jane Wegener and Charlotte Gorham Stay tuned for edition 6...
Thank you.